This is a short story of how Ian the Chicken had one of his feathers plucked, had the cells extracted and replicated, and now you can eat Ian the Chicken without actually touching Ian the Chicken. Yes, the chicken's still alive. His cells were reproduced and turned into real chicken meat. And that chicken meat is on store shelves at competitive prices. The future of man-made meat is now. Exactly three years ago to the day, January 4th, 2018, we published a very popular article titled, Vegans Unite, Man-Made Chicken is Going Mass Market Soon. Well, soon is today in 2021. Don't confuse man-made chicken or lab-made chicken, whatever you want to call it, with plant-based chicken. We're talking about real chicken here. Our story begins in 2013 when the University of Maastricht in the Netherlands, partially funded by Google founder Sergey Brin, made the world's first cultured meat hamburger. Each hamburger cost just $300,000. Well, that's a lot. Fast forward to 2019 and a company called Eat Just Inc. was able to manufacture a single chicken nugget for about 50 bucks. Zip to 2021 and Eat Just is able to sell their man-made chicken at prices on par with high quality farm chicken. Founded in 2011, Eat Just first appeared on the CNBC Disruptor 50 list in 2015 when it was called Hampton Creek. It had a star-studded board of directors and still does. It had substantive backing from Bill Gates, Mark Benioff and others. And uh, yeah, the company had some early problems including concerns over safety of its products and a scheme to buy back the Just Mayo product line to inflate sales. But the company's emerged as a winner. In 2020, Eat Just came in at number 21 on the CNBC Disruptor 50 list. The company was best known for its Just Egg product until now. Just Egg is uh, something made from mung beans, which is a plant-based replacement for eggs. It is not growing cells and making real eggs. 10 years after the company was founded, which is now in 2021, Eat Just has 250 employees, has sales nearing $100 million, has raised $300 million, and is valued at one and a quarter billion dollars. The cells of a real chicken were extracted. By the way, that chicken's name was Ian. My name is Ian, and they said that this was the healthiest chicken that they could find. So I'm taking that as a very big positive for me. I'm going to have to put up with Ian the chicken jokes for the rest of my life now. So I've got to get something positive out of this. What they did is they pulled a single feather from this chicken, clipped a tiny bit of it, and they reproduced the cells that were in that feather. They mixed that in a fluid that provides nutrients to allow the cells to grow, and then they put it in a machine called a bioreactor, which is where the cells multiply and turn into, well, you know, real chicken meat. One of the questions that comes up a lot is, why is cultured chicken or cultured beef better than farm chicken or beef? I mean, didn't realize that cultured chicken in particular was a real problem. If you're thinking all oh, this sounds like a pointless science fair gimmick, think again. Cultured meat has revolutionary potential. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, mankind currently slaughters a whopping 80 billion animals a year for food. As Ian the chicken can attest, this technology's most obvious potential benefit is that it could eliminate the need to kill any animals for their meat. There are vast implications in that idea for animal welfare. No more inhumane conditions at factory farms. And for human health. After all, deadly diseases like the swine flu have transferred to humans from farm animals, which are also commonly affected with coronaviruses. Perhaps most importantly, lab-grown meat could be a turning point in humanity's battle against climate change. That's because raising livestock for human consumption is a leading cause of carbon emissions. According to a new study published in The Lancet, the food system is responsible for 20 to 30 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions, most of which originate in meat and dairy livestock. In his book, Billion Dollar Burger, reporter Chase Purdy notes, a single cow produces about 100 kilograms of methane, about the same as a car burning through 230 gallons of gasoline. To put that into perspective, it means just two cows produce roughly the same amount of greenhouse gases annually as a new car sold in America does in a year on the road. Once you know the worldwide count for heads of cattle stands at 1.5 billion, it should become clear 
just how polluting raising farm animals has become. The issue we were not able to find numbers on related to energy. Producing chicken meat in a machine surely consumes some power. Uh, however, we weren't able to find out exactly how much. We did, however, find this chart from 2010 that shows that uh, farming chickens is an energy intensive business. So we suspect that cultured chicken is substantially better and needs a lot less energy, but we don't know that. What are the problems with cultured chicken and beef? Well, first problem is that the fluid that provides the initial nutrients to the cells that were extracted comes from bovines, comes from cows. So the process is not completely vegetarian, it's certainly not vegan. However, it's believed that a plant-based catalyst will be developed within a few years. The cost of these types of meats, secondary, is at the top range of what farmed meats are. So that's a problem. But as production grows, we expect that the uh, costs will drop substantially. And by the way, yeah, the pun was intended on as the production grows, get it? Cultured meats also have a problem of incorporating fat. And as my high school economic teacher used to put it, fat is flavor. So that's an issue. And the last big issue is that the texture of cultured meats is not the same as farmed meats and people's mouths are very sensitive to texture. Today in 2021, as you can see here, there are ways of 3D printing cultured meat to improve the texture and fat issues, but there's still lots of work that needs to be done. The future of cultured meat is really interesting. So there's some obvious points we're not gonna belabor here. I mean, you know, yeah, cultured beef, pork, and chicken will have substantially positive impacts on the environment and some people's ethical concerns about farm meats, so on and so forth. So that's all well and good. However, beyond the desire of humans on Earth for high protein meats, think about what this does for deep space travel or even colonization on other planets. This is something that we are going to see and live with in the not so distant future. If you have any questions or concerns, please note them in the bottom here in the comments section, or you can get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. And we'd really like you to click like if you found this video useful and subscribe if you find this kind of thing interesting. We spend a lot of time uh, delving into uh, electric vehicles, delving into the energy sector, high technology, trade issues, those types of issues. But as you can see, we stay on facts. We avoid opinion as much as possible. So we would appreciate that as uh, your like and subscribe really help us with the Google algorithm. You can also get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.